This division was founded on, in part, on the studying the problem of high altitude nuclear detonations. We try to understand the uh, environment, the space environment. We try to work together with people who uh, fly rockets or satellites and make measurements in space. Often they see very interesting things, but they fly through so fast they can't get anything but a quick snapshot of it. So we actually look at space. We see if we can modify space with both chemical releases and high power radio waves. And we look at the physics. What kind of basic science can we do with ionospheric modification? Imagine beaming a flashlight up onto the ceiling. Now when that flashlight reflects on the ceiling, you actually get some glow. That's exactly what happens with heart. You beam it up and where it reflects in the ionosphere, which happens to be where the wave frequency matches a resonance in the bottom side of the ionosphere, it excites electrons. The electrons get accelerated, bump into the neutral gas, and it glows. HARP is the most, I would say, the most conspiracy prone instrument that was ever created. And there's two reasons for that. One, people don't understand the science. Two, people exploit that non-understanding to make money. In other words, there are people who write books, they sell anti-HARP hats, which looks to me like tinfoil pressed around a volleyball and they'll actually sell that to that'll protect you from heart. Our branch was called Geophysical Plasma Dynamics uh, Branch. And they were very busy in trying to understand what will happen to upper atmosphere if a nuclear bomb this goes up at high altitude is detonated. Fear was communications and everything will be gone. We'll probably lose contact with our uh, far-flung units. We were very much interested in understanding how the environment changes with the nuclear detonation. So what you see behind me is the NRL Space Physics Simulation Chamber, or the Space Chamber as we call it. This device is a large uh, vacuum vessel, so we pump all the air out of this uh, machine and then backfill it with something called plasma, electrically charged uh, gas. And what we do here in the Space Physics Simulation Chamber lab is recreate conditions that you would find in space. The Navy is a big user of space. We operate a lot of satellites there, so it's in our best interest to really understand how the environment operates. See, what happens is when nuclear burst takes place, it creates uh, fission-related electrons, charged electrons. And these electrons get trapped in the Earth's field because Earth's field is a dipolar field, and it traps, this, that increases the radiation level. Any satellites going through that ultimately will be uh, destroyed. New nations coming up like Korea, Iran, what if they just take a nuclear bomb and detonate at higher altitudes? They, have, they don't have much space assets. We have a lot of space assets. So even if they do it, our, we'll be the, it'll asymmetrically affect us because these satellites will go through this radiation trapped radiation and all get destroyed. Our economy will be destroyed. The way of life will be destroyed. The fact that we do space, we do low temperature plasma processing, we do fusion, we do pulse power, we do rail guns, uh, we do directed energy, it's, it's pretty unusual to have that broad a, uh, a research cross-section.